Hi, everyone. Welcome back. This is episode 12 of Pod TC, our December episode number 12. Like I said, a whole year of the podcast. Um, it is cold here in Ohio, but we're pretty happy about the holidays coming up. And like I said, a whole year of Pod TC down. Um, I mean, hopefully you guys have been enjoying the project. It's been a lot of fun to talk to, to people around the state and get their perspectives about what's going on and learning about these little, not little, but some of these subjects that maybe I don't get to talk about a lot. So I think that this one today is something that isn't always the first conversation that we think about in the world of transfer, but especially for our folks at rural community colleges, this is their life every day and they would like their perspective shared as well. So I am thrilled today to be joined by a friend of mine. Um, her name's Megan Asuna. She works for Terra State Community College. She is a senior admissions advisor. How are you doing today, Megan? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate the favor. Absolutely. Glad to be here. Yeah. So um, we met at a conference, and I feel like I know you pretty well, but there's probably plenty of people in the membership that don't. So could you tell me a little bit about yourself, maybe like where you, I mean, we kind of went over where you work, but anything that you want to share about like your educational experience or just anything personal you'd like to share? Absolutely. Um, so as you already say, my name is Megan Osuna. I am the Senior Admissions Advisor here at Terra State Community College. So we are located in Northwest Ohio. Um, in Fremont. So a lot of people probably haven't heard of Fremont, Ohio. So the biggest um, landmarks that I usually say uh, when meeting new people is we're about 45 minutes from Cedar Point um, and about 45 minutes from Toledo. So kind of smack dab in the middle. Um, I pretty much grew up in Fremont. That's how I know about Tara. I graduated from Fremont Ross. Um, so it was, you know, right around the corner from me. But what I think is really interesting is even though, you know, I moved to Ohio when I was around eight um, and, you know, graduated from here, I had no clue everything that Fremont had to, or Tara had to offer before, you know, I started working here. So that's been a really exciting journey for me um, and definitely, you know, a way to kind of connect with students to, of, you know, everything that we have here and we offer at Tara. But Higher education is pretty new for me. Um, I have been at Tara for a little over two years now. Prior to that, I was working in housing management. So I used to run apartment complexes um, up in Toledo. So um, elderly disabled income-based property. Uh, so I had zero experience in higher education before I kind of fell into it. Um, and I'm really happy to be here. I really love it. I feel like um, I love all the work that I'm doing. So yeah. yeah. You do important work. So I know you're always busy because every time I'm there, you're giving tours and talking to students mm -hmm. the entire time. So um, that's kind of a um, maybe a good segue into the second question about just getting involved with working with transfer community college students. Um, I know that kind of just as a part of your work at a community college, transfer is just kind of baked in. But was there, other than just being from the area, was there any draw to, you know, starting to work in higher education or what kind of led you to where you are now? Um, so transfer specifically, um, I honestly don't know kind of what pinpointed me starting to take that on. I know, I mean, we have two pretty big partnerships with some local four years. Um, and I just kind of, you know, started asking a lot of questions, um, you know, going to different conferences, kind of like how we met. It's just making those connections with, you know, transfer admissions advisors at four years and just presenting the idea of, you know, we would love to have you come on campus just to kind of show students, um, especially if they're thinking about transferring to a four year after Tara, or maybe it's something that they didn't think about previously before kind of seeing you here. Um, and just having those, you know, those conversations with the students and then being able to put a, you know, a face like with the school as far as, well, I know I can talk to Jonathan if I have questions about Kent State. Um, I am, I am technically a transfer student um, in a past life. So I, when I was 18 years old, when I graduated high school, I was like, I want to get out of Ohio. It's cold here. I want to get out of a small town. Um, and I up and I moved to Arizona and I went to school out there for a couple of years. So I decided, you know, life happens. Um, out of state tuition uh, and student loan mm -hmm. debt is a very yeah. real thing. Yeah. Um, and I decided to transfer back to Ohio. And I wish I would have known then what I know now about the transfer process. 
Um, and I had to do an entire extra year of school for my undergrad just because of credits not transferring. Um, just the advising process, I feel like was very different back then uh, opposed to how it is now. So I kind of just started having those conversations with students at Tara as far as, you know, I'm admissions is the first person that they meet with after they mm -hmm. apply. So I am here to kind of help them through the process of you know, getting their MyTerra account created, making sure we have transcripts for them, you know, is there test scores that we need, you know, getting them in contact, then kind of, you know, handing off to the academic advisor and just building those conversations with them, those relationships with them, as far as, you know, what are your, what are your goals? What are your plans for yourself? Um, do you, do you want to transfer to a four year after your time at Terra? And then just getting them in contact with the correct person at that four year, um, even if it is just answering some general questions and just sitting, you know, making sure that you're able to sit down with them and start planning out what their two years are going to look like with us. And I tell them, you know, I don't want you taking a bunch of classes that aren't going to end up going towards anything. Right. It's a huge waste of time and, and money. And, you know, being a victim of having to do a ton of extra credits and, you know, having a lot of classes that didn't go towards anything. Um, I, th I think that's kind of why I have a soft spot for it as far as, you know, I think that's kind of really what pushed me into feeling as passionate about transfer as I do. Um, is that sounding too cheesy? It's not cheesy. I mean, especially there's a lot of people in the membership that were transfer students themselves and that personal experience just kind of helps you become an advocate. Um, I know I just talked to Jared last month about like military students and we don't know the lingo and stuff. So having a vet around, it's kind of a transfer vet. That's a bad way to put it, but um, having your past experience bleed into the, the student's experience now and helping them out kind of from that perspective of your own. I was not a transfer student and I don't have that. Um, my wife was a transfer student, so I kind of saw it by proxy, but it just wasn't it's personal, but not as personal, I guess. So um, that's a great perspective to have. Um, speaking of perspective, um, I would love to get your perspective on this. Uh, so rural community college, when taken literally, means a community college in a rural area, which I think we can all agree on. Um, but how do you personally kind of define like the characteristics aside from it being that literal definition? Like what else makes a rural community college itself? Um, well, I mean, it's definitely kind of how you said it. The very obvious is, you know, I say that Tara is kind of a little hidden gem in the middle of the cornfields, literally. Um, we literally. are not <laughs> literally, yes. Um, we are not very close to any, you know, large metro metropolitan areas. We don't have any really in our service district. Right. So again, the closest to us would be, you know, Toledo. But as far as, you know, Cleveland or Columbus or Cincinnati, I mean, that's at least two hours from us. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Toledo is a pretty big area. Don't get me wrong. Um, but on a scale of like the very large cities, you know, in the state of Ohio. Um, so it's along with like the shrinking population of students, it's kind of, you know, how do I describe this? Um, not to say a challenge, but just, you know, student enrollment and recruiting has definitely been a struggle. Um, sure. And I think that everyone right now, probably, you know, in higher education from conversations that I've had, they're also in the same boat. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's definitely, you know, we're working with smaller schools, we're working with smaller areas, which I think is, it's not necessarily a bad thing, um, just because, you know, we're a, we're a small school. Our population is around, you know, I would say give or take 2,200 students. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that Tara is a really good option for especially our rural high schools in the area for students that are kind of, you know, they're used to small class sizes. They're used to a small right. graduating class. Um, so I think that Tara is a great starting place for students before, you know, jumping into a very large school. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when I meet with students or I do, you know, presentations, I'll tell them that, you know, I was in an incoming freshman class of like 10,000 students. I was literally a clicker number in a lecture hall. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have that here. It's definitely a more personalized experience for them um, and a lot of like more one-on-one -on -one time. Yeah. Like that's a very long 
kind of tangent answer to your question. I apologize. We like tangents. Um, <laughs> I think you're right, though. And then especially, I mean, um, as like economic development in, in certain areas, I'm from a smaller town myself and the local community college, you can tell that their programs are very much geared. There's more like the maybe the generalist degrees like AAAS, things like that. But then there's definitely... I mean, I suppose like healthcare is important anywhere, but manufacturing is huge where I'm from. And like the the programs at the local community college definitely reflect the, the economic needs of the area to some extent. So you guys definitely do serve impo important purposes, even just on, I mean, I guess that's not a small scale, but you're right. And I mean, like you guys can be the mediary between a student from a smaller high school to jump into the college environment to kind of get used to it before jumping into maybe a larger institution, or maybe they just never want to leave home and they can complete the bachelor's degree completely online somewhere or, you know, certain things like that. So I think that you put it really well. Um, I put this because um, it kind of referred to our conversation maybe before we get started, but how abundant do you think rural community colleges are? So we looked this up and in the state of Ohio, there are 14 rural community colleges, um, which does not seem like very many. Yeah, in my that's, opinion. that was the public list. So I'm sure we've got more that are not, quote unquote, you know, on the on the Department of Education's website. But um, I definitely yeah. feel like they're they're in pockets of the state for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a few uh, in you know, more of the northwest. Ohio area. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. I, it like definitely depends. Um, so in Northeast Ohio, um, I wouldn't categorize any of our community mm -hmm. colleges, big or small, as um, as rural, because most of them are in some sort, you know, it doesn't have to be a Cleveland, it can be a, I'm like, not smack talking Canton, I'm just saying it's smaller than Cleveland, but I wouldn't consider that a rural area, right? Right. But um, when you get into like Northwest or Southeast, or even kind of like when you're central outside of the Metro Columbus area, of course, a lot of these community colleges would be considered rural. So um, just in Ohio, I know like, obviously, OTC, we're, we're Ohio. If you go around the country, I'm sure it's kind of the same way. Um, but in Ohio, we, sh we surely do have an abundance of, of rural community colleges that all have their own voices and needs and, and concerns and such. So um, what are some of the strengths uh, for a student for attending a rural com community college? And what do you like about working at one? So I think I kind of touched on this a little bit um, in my last like very long answer to your question. Uh, <laughs> I love that we're able to give more of a personalized approach um, for our mm -hmm. students. Um, you know, we're, it's a very, very high touch, I would say, as far as, you know, they meet with me. If they have any questions, you know, they'll reach out to me, whether that's via phone, whether that's via email. And it's, it's the, we're ch consistently checking in with them, making sure, you know, hey, how's the admissions process going? Do you have any questions? Is there anything that I can help you with? Um, I mean, along with, which I'm sure a lot of, you know, other schools are the same way, but along with being assigned once they apply an admissions advisor and an financial aid advisor and an academic advisor, mm -hmm. I mean, the students also have a success coach that's, you know, checking in with them throughout the semester. So, there's always, you know, someone or a name or a face that a student can kind of refer to if they have any questions. You know, right. we have so many students that I meet with that, you know, they may be a, a first gen student. So this is very new to them. This whole process is very new and it can be really scary if, you know, you're used to high school and this is a completely different, you know, transition. Um, or even, you know, we have a lot of non-traditional students that may be coming back to us after taking, you know, some time off, or maybe they're apprentices and they're coming, you know, to, to take some classes with us, work towards a certificate or an associate's degree, um, you know, through work. So the unknown is scary. I mean, we've all been in those situations. So being able to really connect with them and have that personalized, like that personalization is incredible. Yeah. Um, I love, again, without trying to sound too cheesy, I love being able to say that when I walk through campus, I know a majority of the people that I work with. I mean, of course, we have adjunct faculty that are, you know, only online or strictly online. So the chances of me, you know, really interacting right. with them are probably slim. But 
being able to give a tour through campus and running into the president or the, you know, the VP or, you know, the instructors and the student being able to ask them questions and interact with them is amazing. I mean, yeah. for admissions, you know, I know general information about all of our programs, uh, but the instructors are really the ones that they're in it every day. They're the ones that teach it. So that so the students being able to, you know, build those connections with the instructors and ask those specific questions and get answers is I love. Um, mm -hmm. and like I like being able to say that we really do have a great team here and we have a family environment. Um, again, without you know, sounding too cheesy. I love everything that community colleges stand for. I love, um, I'm really lucky that this is, you know, my first experience in higher education, um, just because I do feel so passionate about working for a community college. It's really nice. Yeah, I'm happy you enjoy where you work. And you're <laughs> right. I mean, having those, um, a smaller campus and being more accessible to the students and being able to to rope people in, I mean, I would never, I couldn't, you know, one person ever meet everyone that, that works on campus here. There's thousands of employees and I would, um, and bad enough with names. So I don't need to even try to do that with people, but, um, you know, working at a smaller college and just being able to casually bump into people on the way to the cafeteria or whatever, uh, that's, that's always, that's so helpful for the students and it's helpful for you and team camaraderie and all of that. So, um, that's really it's yeah. nice being able, especially, you know, at graduation, you know, seeing after, you know, the admissions process that they've kind of, you know, have transitioned to working with their academic advisor and maybe they don't really need me anymore, um, yeah. but still knowing them by name and seeing them on campus or seeing them walk across the stage at graduation, we really are, you know, such big cheerleaders of all the students that we work with. So yeah. that's, it's an emotional and exciting time. Definitely. It's a good feeling to have for sure. Um, so on the flip side of that, um, for your students and then for working at a rural community colleges, what do you see as the struggles? Um, I would definitely say like funding and budget is a big one. Yeah. Um, and again, I think we kind of said this a little bit earlier too, just like the shrinking population of students in general, um, I know in the past there was a stigma, you know, surrounding community colleges, you know, like I said, I was 18 once I was graduating high school. I wanted to, it's like, I want to get out of the small town. I want to, you know, yeah. when I was 18, I thought I was going to live in Los Angeles and work in public relations. I would never want to live it, where there's <laughs> traffic. I'm very lucky that I don't have traffic driving to work right now. Um, but I do, I think that that was, has been a struggle for sure. Um, I'm seeing less of that though, with especially our growing population of college credit plus students. Um, we're seeing more students see the value and the benefits of community college. Yeah. Well, and we fight every day here at OTC to really, community colleges are a crux of what we do um, in a lot of cases, and they offer a stellar service to the right populations of, of students and such. So um, we're really appreciative for you guys um, in like I said, um, I guess what you said, like, of course, you guys serve a very important purpose to a lot of people. So that's very nice. Um, I think that my last major question um, was kind of just in what ways do you believe employees at rural community colleges can better assist your students and then how we as partner institutions can best partner with you guys? Sure. Um, so to kind of touch on the first question um I think what's really I think what's good about the employees that work here and how we can assist our students is so much of us also live in the rural area um I mean I yeah. live very local most of our employees here um they have maybe a 30 minute drive to work so we're familiar with the barriers that do come along with being in a rural area yeah. um, and so we can kind of help the students through that process and you know give them the tools that they need to be successful during their time with us um as far as you know partner institutions um i think you know honestly what we're building is we're on a great track you know having having you come and be on campus so that the students get familiar with you um, 
is great. I mean, being able to, you know, recognize, you know, you by name, the more that you're here, not just you, I mean, you know, four years in general, four mm-hmm. year schools in general, um, just being on campus so that the student does have a go-to or a contact person. Um, I think that because of their, you know, beginning periods with us being so personalized, it's really nice to have the four years be present just so that the student can feel like they're able to get in contact with you if they need to. Um, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to always be in person. You know, it could be a phone call or it could be emails or, you know, a Teams or Zoom meeting. Um, But I think getting connected with the students early on at their time at Tara is the best possible way to set them up for success for when they do transfer to a four-year. Nice. I mean, I think that a lot of us also kind of understand that model where it's just easiest to be synonymous with your institution and be the person that is that a student just knows to reach out to, even if you don't know every single answer, just Mm -hmm. always kind of being a liaison. Um, I don't know if that's really the right word, but being the, you know, you can conduit the the answers to certain questions and get them for the student and such and always be that. But that's a really good point about how you're always there's such a personal touch at the community college and the rural community college in this case, and just kind of continuing that and understanding that, that it might not be as, you know, busy as, you know, certain colleges might just be really big and be in a big urban environment and things are a bit more quick and happening all the time. We're in a rural area, like you said, Tara's in the middle of a cornfield. And I laughed because the first time I drove there, I was like, where is it? And then I see drive past the cornfield and there's the college. And so there, there it is. Yeah, it's a exactly. very nice campus. It just was like off the highway was a lot of corn. So absolutely. Um, but yeah, I mean, kind of. I'm sure it's a shock for students to kind of start start with us being so rural. And then if they do transfer on to a school that is in a more urban area, I mean, it's a culture shock, you know. Yeah. Um, I know it was for me a little bit. I mean, I was really, sure. I was very lucky that when I was young, you know, I traveled a lot. So I was kind of used to larger cities, um, yeah. but it was still, you know, you're taken aback a little bit of, oh, I'm not used to this, you know? So sure. it's, it's having that, having that contact at that four year, um, at least you still have that sense of, well, I know someone here. I know there is someone I can go to and ask questions if I do have any. Yeah. That's so important. Absolutely. Is there anything else that I forgot to bring up that you would like to add to the conversation? I don't think so. We covered a lot. You don't have to. (laughs) I don't know. Hopefully I'm not forgetting anything. I don't think you are. I just like to ask because you guys are the experts on your topics and I am just a bystander in this whole conversation. A noisy bystander. Well, you know. (laughs) Well, that is a good place to call it then. Um, Megan, thank you so much. I really appreciated the conversation. I appreciate you for doing this for me. Um, Like I said, this is our last episode of the year. So, you know, holidays are coming up. So just from OTC, happy holidays, Um, whatever you celebrate. If you do, um, I hope that you and your family, friends, whoever you celebrate with, if you do um, have a great season, Um, we will rejoin you here in the new year. Uh, We have some exciting webinars and the conference coming up in June and such. So we hope to talk to you all about that and see you soon. So thanks. Thank you. Happy holidays.